So um, just to start off, on the uh, little note keeping, on the back of your uh, folder there is the way to start an OWASP project. Um, that's basically what I've done. I've started an OWASP project, donated some code to OWASP. Now I'm basically out there telling people about it. So um, if you want, if you have, if you write code, if you you know have some stuff that you want to, that's kind of laying around that you want to donate to uh, get a good project going on. Uh, I'll tell you, it was pretty easy to set up to do, so I highly recommend you guys uh, do it. And um, there's pretty good support for it as well. So I just thought I'd get that housekeeping item out of the way. Um, so in case you uh, don't know me, uh, I'm Ken Belva. I've uh, spoken a few times here in New York. Um, and basically what I wanted to present today was a project that I donated to OWASP that came from my pen testing experience, um, specifically dealing with uh, passwords. So the title of the presentation, of course, is the pen test dictionary you need is the one you create. And this is an introduction to what I named the basic expression and lexicon variation algorithms, a context-aware dictionary builder. So um, here's what we're going to be going over tonight uh, about the project and its name. Um, we're all basically dealing with passwords here. That's what tonight's agenda is. So some fundamental password problems, quick review, some bad password cases that I've run into. Uh, we're going to be talking about word clusters and easy to remember passwords. Some, uh, when you're a pen tester and you're uh, dealing with passwords, some problems that you run into, some ideas about how to solve some of those problems, um, and which basically brings me into the application I developed. Um, the current functionality of the code base, um, some tools to use after generating a custom word list, because that's basically what we're doing. A few run statistics. I'll give you guys a little bit, a quick demo. Um, why you should use this in your organization, even if you're not doing pen testing. Um, uh, to volunteer on the project, things that need to be done, some resources, Q&A, and basically my, my info. So this is what the, um, the user interface looks like in its second version. Um, we'll be going over uh, getting data in, where it goes out, what substitutions and policies are, and basically how to, how to run it. Um, about the project, in short, um, I realize that passwords aren't exactly the most sexy cybersecurity topic on the planet, but the bottom line is that they're fundamental to an organization's security posture. Okay, so um, I've already presented on stuff like cross-site scripting, so you'll have to cut me some slack here. Um, but passwords have been, of course, weak, bad passwords have led to some major breaches, including Target, Home Depot. And so in terms of the project, it's 100% free, donated OWASP, the source is GPL version 3. Uh, I did name the project after my dad, not after myself, so keep that in mind, all right? He'll be more... You'll know him more than you'll know me, probably. Um, and so, just so you know, the, um, it conveniently is the case that basic expression and lexicon variation algorithm happens to stand for my last name. It just happens to be that way. So, um, issues surrounding passwords, two perspectives, generals and pen test review. Um, as you know, passwords rely, the strength of password relies on its length, the fact that it is or is not a common dictionary word whether it's in mixed case, whether it has numerics, and whether it has special characters, right? Pretty basic, I mean. So some bad cases that I've seen are basically people using a variation on a name on the organization. So if you're pen testing BlackRock and someone happens to have some variation of BlackRock in their password, that's a common scenario. Um, also, it tends to be that people tend to add the year that they're in to the end of the word, to a common dictionary word. Um, password requirements may make words more complex than simple. Um, upper, lower, special character number. And words, may be easy, words that may be easily selected um, from a particular context of a person's environment. In other words, the organization's lexicon. So this has to do with, basically, you go out to the website, and we're going to get into this in terms of word clusters, but organizations tend to have, and verticals tend to have words that are associated with that particular vertical that don't cross over into other ones. Um, and then there are custom permutations that may exist that may not be found in existing word lists, like Rockium. 
So here's an example, and I have to be careful what I say because um, my girlfriend is in the audience here, and this is an email from her. So, <laughs> but this is an example of a password matching a site. She sent this to me a couple days ago, and I'm like, I have to use this in my presentation. This was not planned, I promise. But she's like, hey, do you want to go out and get some tickets to go see a Broadway show? It's like, sure. So she sent me this email. You can see in the subject line, TDF discount tickets. You guys know what TDF is here in the city? They're basically, yeah. They're basically, that's the name of the acronym for um, basically discount ticket broker for Broadway shows. And you can see here that TDF is also in the URL, right? And then you could see TDF1234 is the password, which I hope has now been changed. So um, basically, what you see here is a variation which I'm trying to get to, where you have the na basically the name of the organization and a simple appendage of 1234 onto the password. So if you go out to probably something like you know, your average you know, word list from Twitter or something like that, chances are you're not going to find that particular combination there, unless it's the person's initials and 1234. But it's clearly relevant to this organization. And if I were to be pen testing this organization, I'd probably want to test that. So the question is, how can I create words like this that would be very e that are relevant to the organization which I'm testing. And that's basically what the application does. So you can see with word cluster examples, um, you know, for financial services, for instance, you have words like annuity, stock, bond, arbitrage, checking, savings. And you can see these other word clusters that they don't exactly match. So you're not going to be using shirts in the context of meat, fish, and chicken. So if you're pulling data from people's website, from these organizations' websites, it will be focused on that particular vertical and words specific to that particular organization, which aren't going to cross over from other industries. And so when you're creating these word lists, you want to do something customized. So I needed a way to test for potential passwords relevant to the, to the organization I was testing. That was the fundamental problem that I ran into. And I wanted to do it where I wanted to create those kinds of word clusters, those word lists on the fly, with pretty much a nominal amount of effort. I mean, I didn't want to sit there manually cutting and pasting and doing those kinds of things. And I found that when I was doing the existing pen, when I was doing pen tests, the, the, the um, tools that are out there are a little bit difficult to configure. Um, they generate a lot of data. They weren't giving me the customizable stuff that I really wanted. Um, an example of which was, are uh, you guys familiar with the, the tool Crunch that's on Kali? So that was one of the ones. It's, it's good, but it's difficult to configure to get exactly what you want. So in the alpha stage, very early on, I wrote some code that took a specific word and altered it according to a specific replacement pattern. And although I could build like very simple one-word dictionaries, I wanted a way to do a lot more that was, very, that was not manual. That was the key. And so I realized that I wanted to bring in an organization's context from web proxy tools like Burp and Zap. You know, if I'm out there pen testing anyway, and I'm going and I'm getting the data from their website, and it's coming through into my proxy, I might as well use it. And those words that are unique, I'll be able to basically use those for my dictionary. So I, it's very efficient in that sense that I don't need to do extra amount of effort, or I could set up a, um, a spider and just go out and grab the data for me. Um, I wanted to weight the words to find the most important ones and remove trivial ones. Um, I needed something that was easily expandable, so for future engagements and new, new ones, I basically didn't have to do, start from scratch again. And I want to make sure that whatever new rules I came up with, so you know, organization one, I'm thinking that maybe X, Y, Z is a problem, and organization two, I have a different kind of set of rules I want to apply. I can set, I can basically select a different set of rules per organization or whatever I'm doing. So let's go into the actual app itself. But does anyone have any questions, by the way, at this point? Anyone? Anyone? Good. All right, so this is the, uh, the interface in its second uh, iteration here. And there are a couple of different areas which we're going to go into. Um, the first one is basically importing. The second one is this.
remove words that maybe not won't fit what the organization's policy that you're looking for. So from the import, this is basically what the import looks like. All right, it imports from Burp through the XML through Zap uh, from Zap, creates unique word lists as I mentioned. Um, you can import pre-existing dictionaries that you have. So if you have you know a, a password file of common passwords that you like to use, or if you have um, a dictionary of all U.S. words, uh, some of which I've already supplied actually that's out on Git, you can use those in here as well. You can basically dump everything into one directory, and it will go through and it will sort and figure out what is what and run it automatically so you don't have to choose individually. And um, yeah, can import existing words lists. All right, so these are uh, the core piece of actually what I'm looking to do here, right? Apart from importing data, making a unique list from an organization, we then want to do stuff with those words that we import. We want to basically do substitutions. So for instance, if someone has an L, we, want, we may want to replace it with a one. If someone has an A, we may want to replace it with an at sign or the number two. And that's what these top things do. And then as you can see, it's pretty straightforward, pretty clear, adding or removing. So we'll get into some stuff. Um, it, you, by the way, this is a plugin model, which is what I'm going to get into in a second. And you can just basically write a quick Python script, which I'll show in a little later on. And you can basically pop in new policies and substitutions in as fast as you can write them. And you don't have to change the original code base. Um, so power users will be able to write their own plugins. Um, you can dump a unique list of words if you want to. So for instance, if you don't want to do any kind of changing, you just want to get something unique, unique list, you can do that. You can run different combinations of policies at once. Um, and the, it defaults to a simple removal of common words, because you don't want to test the and 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 of and stuff like that. So it removes that kind of stuff. And it filters out duplicate words um, and uses unique instances. So um, this is what the substitution bar looks like. The first one just base, the first one does no substitution, it just passes the word on. Second one does casing, so um, small letter A to a large letter A, and the hacker one does all kinds of numeric and character substitutions. A substitution is basically like replacement. So uh, if you have Ken, the, my <clears throat> the E turns to a three. Um, you can also see that for substitutions like A, you can do small letter A, capital letter A, and the at sign. And all, all variations will be generated for, for a word. So any substitution you put, it, you won't have to do anything. It'll do, every, it'll do it all. Um, policies, as I was kind of mentioning before, adding, word, adding digits, adding years, adding 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I also have 1, 2, 3, 4. Adding a single digit, which will, so if you have a word like Apple, it'll, it'll send back Apple 1, 2, Apple 3, Apple 4, Apple 5, Apple 6, Apple 7, basically 0 through 9. Uh, capitalize, capitalize the first letter. Remove sets of words that don't meet particular length. In the last one, you can see that's more like a, um, what do you, more like a corporate policy. Like it will select words with one cap, one number, and one special character. Um, and so basically, as I kind of explained on the other slide, so those are things that you can write. So if you know what the corporate policy is, that it has to have two capital letters in it, for instance, or it has to have two numbers, you can write a selection policy. So when you're generating these lists and lists of words right, from your import, you can then filter out the ones that are generated that don't match or, or won't match the policy of the organization. So you don't have, you don't have to waste time testing them. Um, this is a status message, so when things come back, I'll show you an example of when this works. Um, some tools to use after generating a custom word list. Um, you can take the password list and feed it back into Burp for authentication forms. Right? Um, there's, a, there's the ability to generate user IDs as well. So if you give it a list of uh, first name, space, last name, it'll generate a user ID out of that. And so if you're going to, you can use that to check on websites if they have bad information that comes back, um, which, which val user IDs are valid. So if you pull, let's say, um, so if, also let me say that before, if you can also generate if you want, I didn't write the plugin yet, email addresses as well from that, from that list of names, which can be used in 
pen testing phishing attacks. Um, you can basically dump the passwords into other crackers such as John, OLC Hashcat, and um, Aircrack NG. And basically the idea is a unique list of words, more accurate and fewer trials than just something like, um, something like Crunch. So I ran this over uh, RockQ. Um, the, some statistics are that, you guys know what RockQ is? It's basically a huge password file that came from a hack from the site rockyou.com. And it is and, basically 140 megs. Um, it has over 14.34 million passwords, which I'll show you in a second. It's, pro it's one of the largest direct lists of passwords that's out there. And the goal of mine was to see how many actually kind of fit corporate policy, right? So how many of those words actually were between like six and 15 in length, which are probably pretty average to selection, and which ones contained both an uppercase number and special character as well as lowercase. I was just curious to see people's selection of passwords out of 14, over 14 million, how many fit. And so this is what it looks like actually running. Um, I put the RockU file in the import directory. I selected no substitutions because I didn't want to alter the words in any way. I, didn't, I selected no mutation policies because I didn't want to create you know, Apple 1 or Apple 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or Apple with a year. And then basically what I did is I basically put my selection filters on and said select those between 6 and 15 with the other criteria that I just told you about before. Now before, so it'll tell you processing large file, the name of the file, RockU, and here's the word count. 14,344,392 words. So that's how I got the number. I didn't know that before I ran this. Um, and while this is, this is a, you know, a more static set of messages, this one's quicker, right? Like what the application is doing at the time. So when this was taken at 23%, it's at a, about, what, uh, 3,444,000. And the word that it's, it's representing at the time is sweetie sweat. So there you go. So in this case, the, um, it took about an hour and a half to run. Um, it turns out that there were less than 70,000 words that actually matched those criteria out of 14 million, which turns up being, if I didn't put on the next slide here, there you go. It is less than half a percent. It's like 0.48% that actually would be, could be used in theory, if you're going to use RockU to test some kind of corporate, you know, um, corporate password file or something like that, most of them right off the bat probably don't even match, and it's just a waste of time to even do. So what you could do is you could, of course, take these list of 70,000 words and then further mutate them to be something else what you want. Um, so, all right. So now I'm going to get into a quick, quick demo. Or do you guys want the demo at the end? Demo? Demo now? All right. All right, those aren't on. OK. Um. All right. So this is actually the latest version of this. Oops. All right. Sure. Actually, it doesn't get any larger than this, believe it or not. Can you see that? That's because I, um, in the code here, I made sure that the, because I didn't know what size it was going to be run on, I didn't want to deal with, um, what do you call it? Extending the, uh, the form here. So I basically locked the form in. So the form doesn't get any larger or smaller than this. That's the. Um, so let's see here. Let me just. You know, so in this demo here, um, which actually comes with the, the software, if you pull it right off Git, right? I, uh, this is basically an XML file from OWASP.org. Um, some basically word cases and a zap file. All right, so that's what it's going to import. 
And um, what we'll do is we'll just do no substitution, no mutate, and no selection. So basically what that'll do is it'll just give you a unique set of words. Um, if you want to run it again and you want to do, you know, mutate it, we can do that. That's cool. Um, well, we'll just do a quick run through. So it should be done in about less than 50 seconds or so. It's funny, it varies. There we go. Oops. There we go, 13 seconds. And it pulled in a unique list of 1,500 and basically 19. Um, let me see if so I can show you some of the output here. So you can see it does pull in some stuff. It is version 0 0.1. So, but you can see that, uh, let me see if I can pull that to the middle of the screen here, sorry. I'm actually not working from my, uh, my main, the way, the way the laptop is replicated, it's a little tough here. So you can see some of the words that it pulls in here. Oh, hold on. And it creates basically a unique list. Um, that's from the site. So, came from Zap or? Yeah, it came from Zap and from Burp. So basically, this is what's on the pages, the page of, of OWASP on a number of them. Now, so you can see here, some are really close, like vulnerability. Some are not so close, like used, right? Um, do you guys, know, you guys know Python by any chance? A little bit. So it uses a combination of LXML and it uses, um, what do you, it used a combination of uh, beautiful soup to get some of, this info, some of this data, which is why some of the parsing may be a little bit off, right? And then someone keeps texting me. I have nine new texts since I've been up here. I think, you know, <laughs> someone here knows my number. Yeah. I, well, I'm, I'm past that point. I'll find out later, right? Um, so, Right, yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, what do you call it? So as you can see, right, it's, it's a great, it's certainly a great step in where things have come, right? Does it need a couple of work, a, couple, a little extra work? Sure, but basically we're getting, getting closer to a unique set based on what comes out of OWASP, right? Like Heartbleed, for instance, you know? Um, all right, let's, let's get rid of this for a second here. Um, yeah, save. a little tricky uh, having a qu cross displays. There we go. There we go. All right, so you guys want to give me some words real quick? Hello, hello world. Password. We'll do hello. Password. New York. What? Cat scan. All right, that's enough. I'm sure Tom's going to watch this, so, you know. <laughs> All right, so. Oh. I gotta find this thing. I 
thought I saved it on the. Uh, I, Doesn't like recent. Let's do it by, see it should have been here, right? Let's try by root. Oh my God. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> what was the last word? Big apple. Big apple. All right. Okay, so let's do some, some quick ones first. So what we'll do is we'll just do one, two, three, four to the end of all the all the words here, all right? Um, let me just make sure, excuse me. Yeah, I did. All right, great. Boom, there we go. So I took a second. And there you go. You get the original word, and you get one, two, three, four added to that. All right. Oh, you know what? That's because I selected two policies here. If I do it without selecting that mutate policy, then, oops. Come on. There you go. All right. I had selected two policies, which is why you got both. So let's, this will take a little bit longer. So let's go back to here. Let's add, let's do that. This could take, I don't know how long to run. Okay, so that was pretty quick. It, it generated 4,728 words with different substitutions in it. And it looks like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And we'll do one more one more on the demo here just so you, so to show that you can combine stuff here. Um, we'll also add one, two, three, four, five at the end of those. All right. So you, So now at the end of each generation, <coughs> excuse me, each generation it adds 1 2 3 4 5. All right? Does that does that make sense? All right. All right. Any questions? Questions, comments? Um, there's one more that I might want to show. If you give me one second here, um, it's cool. Write this with your diet of John rules? I'm tired of all that, all that stuff. I just couldn't get what I wanted quickly. You know, that's basically what it came down to. Um, so let's do put in the word the, which is a common word, um, and let's do. <coughs> A really long one. All right. Oops. So now what we'll do is <clears throat> we'll go back to no substitutions. Oops. 
we won't we won't mutate the word at all. And what we'll do is we'll select those that are between six and fifteen. So that should be it should remove the and should remove the really long one. Long string A's. There, oh, see, silly me, I had that on. So it worked properly. Right. Okay. Um, so I have a couple more, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a couple more demos, but in forms of movies, which are much easier to view, and it won't take me as much time to set up. So I wanted to show, um, basically, you kind of already got an idea of it, but putting files in a directory. So basically, you, um, you basically dump all the stuff that you want to import into this import external sources directory, or you could select from the top, but basically that's all you need to do is dump stuff in there. Um, let's see here. I wanted to show um, creating a plugin. So if you know how to program, how, pretty much how, how easy it is to create one, what it looks like. Um, this is from Eclipse. All I do is I take the, the existing policy of 2016, I copy it. <clears throat> I'm going to pause this for a quick second. Um, so over here, you get the description, right? That's what shows up in the list. And basically under here, that's all the code to mutate the word to whatever you want it to be. In this particular case, it's pretty easy. I changed it to 2015. I changed this one in 2015. And we're done. And this is the old interface, by the way. So. What I showed is the plugin wasn't there. I started again, and there it is. It gets picked up. Um, I want to show exporting out of Zap, what that looks like. So this is basically, obviously, just clicking some links. <clears throat> and now I want to do the export here. So I had a little trouble exporting, because it says only resp one response can be exported from a time from Zap. So. I have to create these raw files from the response. So create response uh, raw, the raw, save all. So that's that's the zap export that I, I did. If you can figure out how to do the mass, <clears throat> where you get the mass responses, that'd be great. Show me how to do that. I'll, I'll write the code to import it. And then the other way of doing burp. <clears throat> One of the important parts of Burp is to make sure that the base64 encoding is selected. It's selected by default, but <clears throat> I'll just show you when it comes up. So you go to target. You right click on OWASP.org. <clears throat> Excuse me. You go to Save Selected Items, and you'll see there it says Base64 encoding. Make sure that's checked. Save it as XML. I go by the <clears throat> excuse me. I go by the .xml um, extension. So if you have an XML file and you don't name it as XML, the application is not going to pick it up. Just so you know. All right. So why you should use this? <clears throat> Again, <coughs> excuse me. It's 100% free, GPL3. Who doesn't like free tools? Um, <clears throat> use, case, use cases can be found wherever there are needs for passwords. 
Um, maybe use it in internal self audit. So if you want to, you know, check your Active Directory, like you know, you dump the um, what do you call it? the the passwords from there, the the hashes, and you run them through. And let's say some don't get caught by whatever um, uh, rainbow table you have or something like that. And you want to try and figure out the ones that didn't make it. Maybe you can create your own dictionary to dump it through those. Um, especially the reason why I created this is when you're doing third party assessments, it's very helpful to create words that are unique to a particular um, organization. Um, why you should volunteer. Um, again, GPL3, it's all donated to OWASP. <clears throat> if you like it, it'll be used in the community if you find it useful. Um, you know, you'll get more exposure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Speaking engagements of, um, are a possibility. Credit and potentially other uh, InfoSec accolades. Um, as I showed, it's very easy to write plugins. This is what the um, <clears throat> that hacker dictionary looks like in the very top bar for the substitutions. You can see it's pretty straightforward. You know, you pick a letter, you tell it what should be replaced in it, and that's it. That's the whole thing. You just plug that back in, and it works. It, it gets picked up because I didn't want to have to rewrite everything over and over again. Um, things to be done. <clears throat> Um, a little bit better selection of words, automation, auto, um, automated weighing of words to use, <clears throat> a little bit uh, better responsiveness in the interface, um, a non-GUI version that directs the output to standard out would be great. So you can, um, I've had requests where people want to stand, put it into a process and it pipe it into another application. Uh, right now you can't do that. So that would be great if someone were to write that. Of course, <clears throat> more plugins, additional functionality, the email addresses that I was mentioning before, um, and other types of permutations. Let's see here. These are some project resources uh, on the slide deck. Um, and we'll stick with the Q&A. Questions, comments? Um, out of all what OWASP gave me, that seemed to be the best. And I didn't want people commercializing it if I wasn't going to commercialize it. So I'm like, GPL3. That's why I chose it. You know, I basically didn't want people to commercialize it. Is the short end. You know. So, any other questions? Anyone think that they can use it in their organization or for pen testing? People see the usefulness for it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Great. Thanks. Could you also use that to uh, create? Yeah, usernames, email address, usernames, email addresses, you know, anything you can mutate for words. So it's good. All right. All right. Okay, there you go. That's it. Thanks, guys. <laughs>